you know, when you think about all these things, yeah, you can never actually get proper informed consent from a patient to take something like a statin because there's so much that they would have to understand to actually give proper consent. Yes. And if, if for no other reason, that's a reason that no physician should ever prescribe that drug to anybody, even if it wasn't as dangerous as it clearly is. For the tr absolutely no benefit that's established. Yeah, and the trouble is, though, most physicians probably are not thinking, don't know or are not thinking about any of these things either, right? Oh, physicians are not allowed to think for themselves. If they do, they get struck off the medical register for malpractice. Medicine is if, then, paint by numbers, keep your feet inside the yellow squares, thank you very much, and if the patient presents to you with an LDL level over X, Y, or Z, then you prescribe that drug and you lean on that patient to take it and tell them if they don't take it, they're going to drop dead from a heart attack. All of which is actually criminal because none of it's mm. true. Yeah. LDL doesn't even cause heart disease in the first place. So the drug to, re to reduce cholesterol, ergo LDL, ergo the ApoB, containing lipoprotein carriers or even LP little a or any subfraction of the lipoproteins, doesn't matter. None of them have an established cause and effect relationship or even a decent inference of cause and effect in atherosclerosis heart disease. So if someone, if someone was watching now and they're thinking, well, my LP little a is super high and the doctor's mm. warning me about that or my mm. LDL is super high, the doctor's warning me about that. Mm. And they hear you say, well, those things don't cause heart disease. Mm. Like, what is the, like, if you were to boil it down to a nutshell, like, of the actual cause of heart disease, yep. um, is it, like, something more straightforward like high blood pressure or something like that? Or Yeah, I think as among other things, as a cardiovascular pathophysiologist in my former academic career, what's very important with disease processes is that you put together a deterministic model rather than a theoretical hypo a hypothetical model. Because you've probably heard of the lipid hypothesis that certain classes of lipids cause heart disease, the lipid hypothesis. The key word there is hypothesis. The reason it's called right. hypothesis is because it does not enjoy any experimental evidence. Ergo, given that science can't do that because we can't experiment on humans because that's unethical, impractical, financially impossible, why don't we put together a deterministic model where every level in the model is completely explained in cause and effect by the level above it? So here we go. Where do atherosclerotic lesions occur? Well, they occur in the arteries mm. and never in the veins. Unless you take a vein out of the venous system and graft it into the arterial system, at which time it will start to develop atherosclerosis. Okay? So clearly, we need high blood pressure, or at least pulsatile blood pressure, or probably both. Because you see, the thing is, the venous blood, which is more laminar and at a lower pressure, contains the exact same cholesterol as the blood in the arterial system, because it's the same blood. And yet, while those veins are exposed to the exact same LDL, the exact same lipoproteins, and every subclass of them as well, they never, ever develop atherosclerotic lesioning. Okay, so does LDL cause heart disease, or does cholesterol cause heart disease, or do any of the lipoproteins cause heart disease? We're done. The answer is no, because you need something else. Okay, you need either pulsatile blood pressure or high blood pressure. We've just established that. Now let's look even further, even closer. While atherosclerotic lesions develop only in the arteries, do they develop evenly across the entire surface, the endothelial surface of the high side, the high pressure side of the vasculature, the arterial side? The answer is no. Atherosclerotic lesions develop 
only in certain geographical regions within that high pressure side of the vasculature, predictable areas, we know exactly where to look for these things. That's why we scan for them to look for them. That's why we know where to look, because we know where they develop. Where do they develop? At bifurcations and at curves. So we need turbulence as well. We need high pressure, pulsatile pressure, or both, and we need turbulence. Because laminar flow, low pressure flow, doesn't do it, even though those tissues are exposed to the exact same blood. All right. So wouldn't it be much more important, clearly, just without going any further than that, wouldn't it be much more important to control your blood pressure? Because, you know, if you increase the pressure, then the turbulence increases. So let's control our blood pressure. Would that be a much better approach to attempting to control the development of atherosclerosis? Well, yes, it would. So what you've just said there, I mean, the, this is, you've just explained very simply how the idea of LDL being the cause of heart disease is absolutely ridiculous. Correct. And... I've spoken to Malcolm Kendrick, and he said basically the same thing. Mm. And oh, but, he's, he, he's like, also he's he's also a shill, though. He's also another bloke that's but, an anti scientist. See, I'm kidding. See, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. that, that's the thing. He's another science it, denier. It's a very logical and easy to understand argument about yeah. why it makes no sense to blame LDL. Correct. But both you, Malcolm Kendrick, anyone else that talks about this would just be labelled an anti-science quack. That's right. Because the amount of money that's involved in the allopathic and big pharma intervention to people's cholesterol levels is in the trillions of dollars. There is big, big money at stake here. And these people will pull out all the stops. They will do absolutely everything they can to brainwash, to whitewash, to lie, to obfuscate, to muddy the waters, and to slur anybody who actually wants to apply some basic common sense and logic to the problem. Like I've just done. That's why I'm such a science denier, you see. <laughs> what, what, what do you think, though, about the the average doctor mm. that's out there, they might be on X and they're saying, or the average cardiologist that are yeah. out there on X and they're yeah. saying, you're anti-science and whatever, um, and I don't make any money off statins anyway, so there's no benefit in me, you know, talking, right. uh, like lying about this. Why would I lie if I'm not making any money out of it? Because if any physician who is licensed to practice medicine is found to be singing a song which is not on the song sheet about cholesterol, they will be struck off the register. They will lose their livelihood. They are not allowed to have an opinion or to espouse that to patients if the patient presents with elevated cholesterol or LDL or LP little a if they're even a bit more so-called sophisticated or whatever it is, then they are required to write a script for statins or PSK9 inhibitors or both and to lean on that patient as hard as possible to scare them into taking that dangerous contraindicated toxic sludge under threat of death. If you don't take this, I can promise you, you will not last the next five years. You're going to die if you don't take this drug. That is what they are required to do. And if they don't, I'm sorry, but we are going to take your registration and we're going to drag you in front of the General Medical Council. We're going to fine you thousands and thousands of dollars and stop you from earning any money in the future either, as a physician anyway, because you didn't sing the right song. So, so I mean, on the average doctor, cardiologist level, it really mm. comes down to well, I've got a mortgage to pay and kids to educate. You know, I can't, I can't be, yes. I, I, I can't use my brain about this. Yeah, it, well, it comes down to that. But it also, to, to be honest, sadly, Dave, the average physician simply does not have the intelligence to actually 
remotely put this deterministic model together and even think about that. I've asked physicians about the etiology of atherosclerosis, general physicians, and most of them can't even answer the question, where do atherosclerotic lesions occur, other than they say, well, in the vasculature. Okay, great. Where? Some of them, the better ones, go, oh, well, in the arteries. And I say, so not in the veins then, and they will admit that, no, not in the veins. But then I usually say, well, where in the arteries? And they usually go, what do you mean? They don't know. They're not trained in that. What they're trained in is, if then, paint by numbers, trained monkeys. Sorry, physicians, but it's just the facts. Well, th this is something I've spoken about before, that if I had spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on my education, mm -hmm. probably carrying around debt for that, mm -hmm. um, years, maybe decades at university doing mm -hmm. degrees and, mm -hmm. and PhDs and all this kind of thing, yeah. and then I basically become an order taker, yeah. I'd, I'd rather have worked at McDonald's for all that time just taking orders. At least I feel I have more autonomy. Yep. It, it, it's like it, you're literally training for years, spending all this money mm -hmm. to get a flow chart that says if the patient presents with this, you say this. And That's right. if they present with this, write this script. And That's right. It, it doesn't seem like a very fulfilling end to that much effort. No, it doesn't for the individual doctor concerned. But on top of that, is it leading to good outcomes in the population for health? I mean, look, let's look at public health statistics. Is the incidence of heart disease going down? What about obesity? Cancer? All cause mortality? Well, you could say that's going down or it's moving back in years. You could, you could say the life expectancy is going up. Okay, so there are aspects of the allopathic care, perhaps, although, you know, lifestyle factors as well, you know, compounds, covariates, collinearities. But while we may be living longer, are we living healthier? No, sir, we are not. And isn't that the role of the physician? Aren't they supposed to be a health promoter? As it turns That's out, right. allopathic medicine, underpinned by Big Pharma, is not proactive health management. It's reactive symptomology management. And woe betide actually curing anybody of a disease because you cure a patient of a disease. That's a customer lost for Big Pharma. They don't like that. Name, name me a single drug that cures anything, Dave. They're all symptom managements, aren't they? Right. No. And, you know, that's where you would now be labelled a conspiracy theorist because right. you've just said that. But Yeah, put on the tinfoil hat. I, I, I always bring this back to, if you said this about any other industry, mm -hmm. no one would bat an eyelid. So right. if, I, if I say, for example, like Adobe... Stopped mm -hmm. selling their products as just one-off sales, and and changed their the model of selling their software to you buy this software as a service. It's a subscription model you pay every month, yeah, because they make more money with that, keeping you as a customer forever rather than just doing these one-off sales. Yes, and if you state that as fact, which it is, mm -hmm. then people go, oh yeah, well that's just business. But right. if you talk about big pharma like this, everyone goes, no, you can't say that. That's You're right. a conspiracy theorist. It's That's like, right. what, why do we have different standards? Because this is a very cleverly put together form of mass psychosis formation that has been laid out, probably started originally by the Rothschilds, I guess. I don't know. Whereby let's brainwash several generations of people I'm not I'm not even going to say to think a certain way because actually what we're doing is we're training them not to think we're training them to do as they're told and to and to believe what we tell them to believe 
It's indoctrination. Absolutely, it is. And if you want to call me a tinfoil hat wearer or a conspiracy nut, I really couldn't care less about that. It doesn't make it any less factual. That's, that's what's happened. All we need to yeah. do is, is just apply some common sense and think about this. Has allopathic medicine underpinned by big pharma corporations, have they cured a single disease? No. In a hundred years, not one. Yeah. Why not? Because they don't want to. Yeah. 